Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready, coming to you this week from the scuba diving paradise of Malta. Yes, welcome back to Divers Ready. My name's James, as always, so great to see all of your smiling faces. I am on the beautiful Mediterranean island of Malta, attending Rebreather Forum 4. And we've had an absolutely jam-packed schedule this week. Uh, just fantastic, next level, next generation knowledge coming at us about all the great developments that are happening in closed circuit diving. And yes, I am going to share that knowledge with you here on the channel in upcoming videos. But you're going to have to wait until I'm back in the dive locker in Miami to reflect on my thoughts and process everything that I've learned here. In the meantime, what I can show you is the fantastic wreck diving that we've been doing here that Malta is so well renowned for. Malta has such an amazing history of heritage shipwrecks going back to the Romans and the Phoenicians. It's truly a magnificent place to come and wreck, uh, dive. We heard from a uh, member of the Heritage Malta Association that there are actually over 62 dive centers in the Maltese Islands. Um, so there's plenty of operators to choose from. Diving is very, very well supported and it actually represents quite a large chunk of the Maltese tourism economy. So absolutely great place, highly recommend it. These were my first dives in Malta. I got to do three dives in Malta. Actually, the first dive was in Gozo. That was our shakedown dive and that was a shore dive. It wasn't much to write home about. I'm not gonna spend any of your time on it here. It was literally just a shakedown dive. But the two World War One wrecks we did, I took my big camera rig out and I got some footage to show you guys. The first wreck then is the SS Polynesian. That's the correct spelling in the French. She was a French passenger ship that was militarized for World War I and she was sank by torpedo in uh, 1918. So she's been down a good while. Uh, she lies in 65 meters and she is completely encrusted in beautiful growth as you're gonna see.
As always, my buddy on these dives was the legendary Steve Sanford. Shout out to Steve. Great having you with me, mate. Always a pleasure to dive with you. Steve is a willing participant in all my diving adventures in different parts of the world. You'll remember him from the Bonaire Tech Week video. The second wreck is that of the HMS Nasturtium. Now we got super lucky to dive the Nasturtium because she's quite a long way offshore and that means that we need to have absolutely beautiful sea conditions in order to be able to hit her successfully with the shot line. And luckily we had one day that was just an absolute mwah, peach in terms of weather conditions. We got out there uh, on flat calm seas. When we got to the site, there was barely any current at all. And the people that were on Malta, the locals, were completely flabbergasted uh, because they'd never seen conditions that good that far offshore uh, for this particular wreck site. The HMS Nasturtium was a British war sloop, if you will. Uh, she was actually tasked with mine sweeping off the coast of Malta during World War One. She was commissioned in 1915 and sadly sank a year later in 1916 when she actually collided with one of the mines that she was tasked with sweeping. Again about 65 meters, 68 meters I think to the sand, uh, so definitely a technical wreck dive, but both the Polynesian and the Nasturtium are just great examples of why technical diver training is a goal for so many people because you can't hit these sites without the proper equipment and training and uh, they're just beautiful dives. I mean, look at it here, look at it. It's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. Perfect spring Mediterranean weather. I also want to give a massive shout out to Alan, Vivian, and the team of Misfits, Miscreants, and Ne'er Do Wells at Techwise Malta. That was our operator of choice. Um, these guys did an absolutely fantastic job. Try to imagine a rebreather conference with some of the who's who of closed circuit diving from around the world flying in different rebreather units, different gas requirements, gas volumes, uh, mixes, sorb requirements, uh, the amount of space that all takes up. And these guys just handle the logistics absolutely seamlessly. I've never seen an operation quite like it. Um, so my hat's off to those guys because the dive shop was constantly a buzz, always busy with people coming and going. And it just felt 
absolutely flawless. So again, Alan and Vivian, all the best. And thank you so much for hosting us. That's about all we've got time for, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, as always, for joining me. I will be back in the dive locker next week where I will reflect on my thoughts from RF4 and share with you uh, my takeaways, my key sort of learnings from this week of conferences. Uh, so if you haven't done so already, make your next dive on our subscribe button, hit that bell icon, share this video with your buddy if they're coming to Malta to dive, and I'll see you next week. Dive safe, dive often.